If you've got any questions, just pop them below and we can answer them as we're going during the call as well. Hi, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Hi, I'm live talking to Arbor School this morning, talking to Ezra, who's head of psychology services. Morning, Stacey. Um, we're in a live workshop. We're going to morning neuro dough. We're going to be talking about mindfulness for children, um, the benefits, why it's important, how can we apply it in the home, and hopefully give you plenty of takeaways, tips, and advice that you can use to adopt a more mindful state in your family. We're going to be doing it live on a Zoom workshop with Arbor School. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining. Morning. I'm going to turn now so that you can pick up, we can pick up the screen. Uh, spotlight for everybody. Okay. So, morning, morning, Ezra. How are you? Good morning, Lisa. I'm good, thanks. So, Ezra, we're going to talk about mindfulness for children. So could you explain to us what mindfulness is and what mindfulness perhaps isn't? Okay, yeah, so mindfulness is the, the practice of purposely training and focusing your attention to bring yourself back to the present, so to focus on the moment that we're living in now. And it's not only focusing on what's happening now, but it's also viewing it with acceptance and being non-judgmental about how we're thinking and feeling at, at this time. And so it's it's really become very mainstream now, mindfulness. Um, but it, it doesn't require um, lots of extended meditation. It can be that but it can also be something that's easily incorporated into your day-to-day -day life. I, I like the way that when you begin to practice mindfulness with children, that they become a little bit more aware of what they're feeling, thinking inside and what's happening outside. So I like to say to children, it's about inside and outside, you know, awareness. Would you agree with that statement? Yeah, absolutely. And children are very naturally mindful. If you think about young children especially, they are living in the moment that they're in. Mm. Um, as we get older, we, we grow and respond to our environment and the experiences we're having and the expectations around us. Um, but to certainly to give children that understanding of their, their mind-body connection, um, and focus and to pay attention to the experience that they're living is, is really important. What do you think um, the benefits are for a family beginning to adopt a mindfulness practice at home um, and also for within a school? Okay, so for, for families, um, you know, as I say, the, the, the benefits are being in that moment and, and not being distracted by what you have to do in future um, and not dwelling too much on things that have happened in the past. So it gives you that time to really engage in, in the moment together as a family. So there's lots of ways that families can implement mindfulness and it's not that you have to do this all day that everyone has to be living in, in this mindful state all through their day. It's it's about bringing in moments um, as part of your family routine that you can really enjoy that time together where there's always an agreement that at that time you're not going to be distracted by other things and you're just going to be present together. Mm. Hi. And within the school setting, I can speak for what we're doing here at Arbor. Um, we're really fortunate we've got a mindfulness coordinator who's one of our amazing teachers and he's developed a mindfulness curriculum based on all the mindfulness research that he's done and that's delivered across the whole school and again it's not about children all sitting and having to be, to be quiet and meditate it's interactive they're learning about their emotions they're learning a vocabulary for their feelings 
um, and they're learning to understand that mind-body connection, what their body's telling them about how they're feeling. Yeah. And so what kind of practical activities do you do in school that perhaps families listening at home could also practice? There's, there's so many things that you can do. I mean, at a very simple level, when you're introduced to mindfulness, it's about coming back to your, your breath. So we, we live in a world where there's often lots and lots of distractions, even in, I mean, if you imagine a classroom setting or even if you're in work, there's always something going on. And so there's external noise and then there's our internal noise, which is the chatter in our heads, which is things telling us, well, what do we need to do? We're planning, we're always seem to be thinking, we're on the go a lot. So mindfulness at a simple level allows us to focus back on one aspect of the present moment. Often it's our breath. And we'll just try and accept that the external noise is there, but we train ourselves to come back and focus just on one thing. And because it's non-judgmental, we just accept that you, you can't do it wrong. We can say, oh, I've got all these thoughts in my head. That's fine. Thoughts are just thoughts. And over time, we realize that those thoughts will just come and go. So we don't need to follow every thought that pops into our head. We can train ourselves to then come back and, and focus on the present. So a simple activity would be just introducing a mindful moment. Just pause. Try and focus on your breathing, relax, and, and do that for a few moments. I tell you what I like, Ezra, and with small children, is breathing buddies. So that you, you get children to lay down and you place t a teddy. I mean, it doesn't have to be a teddy. It could be a doll. It could be an action hero. Anyone. Place them on, on little one's tummy and then they start to breathe and they breathe watching the teddy come up and down and they just focus on making teddy go up and down and breathing with teddy that's a really nice practical thing that families could do just before bedtime actually just bringing children down that's that's a really nice one and another one that children find very simple to help them understand how to control their breathing is using their hands and just following your fingers up, so breathing in, get to the top of your finger, exhale slowly, and just get them to do that, and that helps them to control and slow down their breathing. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned bedtime as well, that's a lovely time to introduce some relaxation. Um, there's things you could do with slightly older children as well, called a body scan, and it's just about relaxing feeling yourself on your bed, feeling how it feels, and then starting from your toes, just doing a body scan and thinking about where you feel any tension um, and deliberately relaxing as you lie. And so what about mindful eating? What does that mean? So what we tend to do is we tend to rush through life very much on automatic pilot and, and eating, unfortunately, one of those times when we we can often finish uh, our lunch or finish a meal and we've not even realised really what it's tasted like, especially if you're if you're busy, if you're in a busy job and we just you know, uh, wolf things down. And mindful eating is about bringing that awareness to what we're eating. So at meal times. We would really take a moment to not just get get torn in, but just to really look at the food, to see, smell it, to take small bites, to really um, you know, savour what we're eating and to consciously enjoy our food. And it really helps with our, our regulation as well, because we can recognise our body signals more easily that way. If we're just rushing through, we're finishing it, we're not even recognising are we full, have we enjoyed yeah. that? So really it, it means about taking time to appreciate the food that we're eating. Now, uh, Derry Girl in Dubai has just said that's so true and she's guilty. I think she's 
talking about the mindful the mindful eating it can be really nice to take children on a food journey so that when you sit there with the meal that you picture and imagine where the foods come from and the journey um, that it's been on. So imagine it going in the truck. How did the fruit feel? If fruit had feelings, how would it feel on that long journey? Bringing the fruit you know, to life, smelling it, sniffing it, talking about it. Um, in fact, it also can really help with fussy eating to help children reconnect with food that perhaps they've gone off, you know, vegetables. Um, so, what about, do you think that sometimes as parents or as educators working with children, that maybe we miss the joy in moments? How could mindfulness help us reconnect? Yeah, absolutely. Um, again, it's been, it's been a, a really difficult year for, for everyone. And everyone has experienced some level of stress, low level stress, yeah. um, which is, to degree still continuing and and when you're living with that it, it can be easy to miss those joyful moments as you say um within family life and again it comes back to sometimes we just feel too busy or too preoccupied to to really focus on the moment and you know as a parent there's there can be a lot of pressures and i feel that the parents that i work with they're often bombarded with so much information about how to parent. Oops, sorry, I just slipped over there. Um, how to parent, the the best strategies to use for, for different things. So they they feel a bit overwhelmed, and being mindful can can help with that because yeah. it can, as I said before, it can help us just become more accepting of our situation. It's non-judgmental, yeah. and we can train ourselves to be focused in the moment. Because sometimes, even if we're physically with our children, we're, we're not always emotionally available or, or mentally oh, present Ezra, because yeah. we're thinking about other things. Now, Ezra, um, one of the things I do with families that I work with, and I work with families on a range of issues from behaviour, sleep training, fussy eating, everything. And I would tend to use something called Magic 20, which is about being present with each child for 20 minutes each day, just that works wonders in many family dynamics. And parents yeah. will often feel that in that 20 minutes, that somehow they've got to jump to attention, there's got to be an agenda, they've got to do the best jigsaw puzzle, there's a learning objective. And actually, I'm asking parents just in that 20 minutes with that child, just be present. And that might be just sat on the rug, playing with the trucks, just moving the trucks and the cars backwards and forwards, or just sitting doing Lego with no agenda and just stillness. What do you think about that? I think that's exactly it. That's you know that, that sounds wonderful, and and children, that's all they really want. They want to be seen and understood and accepted. And we, as parents, put a lot of pressure on this idea of doing these perfect activities. Mm. Um, and if we put that expectation of perfection on ourselves, then we are then expecting that back because we, we want to see that our child do something that's mm. equally as, as perfect because we are putting in so much effort yeah. and the one of the elements of mindfulness is that you just accept imperfections and that's part of yeah. the, the relationship and the security within the relationship is that you don't expect anyone else to be perfect so you accept that you can't be perfect yeah. either just to be there and, and enjoy that moment and because it's about being in the moment, um, I don't know if you find this, Lisa, but often parenting, that what parents are thinking about is what kind of adult or, or grown up that child's going to become. Um, and mindfulness brings you back to what is their experience of childhood right now. So what are we doing right now to make it say the, the joyful experience of, of their childhood so yeah. trying to see it more through their eyes in yeah. the present 
I also really like with mindfulness is the use of affirmations. Um, and um, Amber from Um Cupcakes has given us 100. She totally agrees with us. And uh, she's a real mindful mummy. I know Amber. Um, but I, I've, I've lost my train of train of thought then. But I was just, you know, wanted to say that if you use inf um, affirmations, it can be really helpful. And one affirmation is, you know, I am enough. You know, and as a parent, and and getting that across to your child, you know, and that they are enough and that they have your time and using affirmations in a repetitive repetitive way can really help and there's a company called um lauren um which's run by lauren at mini mindfuls and she sells a kit with daily affirmations and i've seen it work wonders in families so just one affirmation each day to focus on what affirmations could you think of that we could use? Oh, Marcia has given us a thumbs up on Zoom. Well done, Marcia. Affirmations are truly effective, says Suzanne Fala Wellness. What, um, oh, morning, Lydia, and Mum's Little Chefs have just joined us. What um, affirmations do you think might be helpful for parents to use, Ezra? I think it's, it's lovely to have, like you've described there, sets of whether you call them strength cards or affirmations that children learn that they, they can be good at some things so being very specific about what children are good at and that it's about the qualities that they're using mm -hmm. that their uh, kindness that they are showing curiosity and um, that they're showing perseverance and um, that yes. they're, they're developing whatever skill it is that they're interested in um, so these are the things that we should really be, those you know, qualities and values that we, we want to enhance in children um, rather than just praise, which is just, oh, that's amazing, that's excellent. So we can really build up their, their self-esteem through helping them feel that they are capable and able to do things. Yeah. Well, uh, Saima has said that she, she said, I am my own calm. I use this with my students and it's doing wonders. Uh, Nora Styled says, thank you both. What age should we be using affirmations? My son is three and my daughter is seven months. Um, can I just pick that up first and say that mindfulness, there is no age you know, restriction on this, that mindfulness begins with us as parents. And so demonstrating mindfulness, even with your seven month old, is of something that you can set up as a ritual as a, and a practice to keep doing. And affirmations, once children have begun to develop language, you can bring them into the classroom, you can bring them into the home. You know, just simple ones, I am happy. You know, mm -hmm. I am thankful. So you can just have <laughs> three to four word affirmations for the little ones. What would you say, Ezra? Absolutely. For, for children who are um, verbal, um, then they can understand that and it's a, a wonderful opportunity to bring in that language for how they're, they're feeling as well. And the younger children have a, a vocabulary for that, then the better. Um, and even for young children, you, you mentioned a, a seven-month-old. Well, how, you know, how can you make a, a seven-month-old feel heard and seen and understood? And it's all through the, the communication with, with their parents. So if, yeah. if they're babbling, if they're making noises, but that's still building up that relationship. So you're still there, you're in tune with what your baby's yeah. communicating to you. As they get older, they'll point and mm. you, you turn around and you know, there's all that wow, the wonder of, of them showing you the world as they discover it. Yeah. And that's all the, the attunement. So it starts from infancy um, I agree. And, and it builds up through, through childhood. I mean, mindfulness could also be given another word, connection with ourselves our environment and our body. Now we've got a few comments I just want to pick up. We've got some lovely comments here. Uh, KQ16.03 says, I send little notes in my son's lunchbox, encouraging, with, with something encouraging every day. Suzanne, um, Suzanne Salas, sorry, Suzanne Salah Wellness says, 
sticking affirmations on the bathroom mirror is such a good place to stick notes on. So kids always see it when they look at themselves. That's, that's wonderful. Um, Arbor School has said, I set a timer for 7 a.m. every day for visualization and practicing a moment of gratitude. We head off to school and spend five minutes doing that. Well done, Miss Hannah, that's fantastic. Um, Saima Farah has said, we do a gratitude conversation. Thank you, God, for the toys, for blessing us with a beautiful smile and adding uh, and the children then adding in more to it. I mean, starting the day with a with a, a thankful heart, you couldn't you couldn't you know get much better, could you, Ezra? Really? Oh, that's that's beautiful. Some amazing examples there. It's lovely to hear them. Um, if anybody has any questions for Ezra, Ezra's head of psychology at Arbor School, so we're really lucky to have her on the call. And this is the first of um, my lives that I'm doing with Arbor. Um, and in fact, if there's any other topics that you'd like Ezra and I to address, please pop them below. We're going to look at, um, in the coming weeks, at attachment and um, how to create more attachment in your in your parenting. Um, so we'll be we're talking about that very soon. We're also on a Zoom with each other, um, as that's why Ezra's on the camera. Um, let's see if we've got any other any other comment. Can you give us some more examples of affirmations? That's Hetel. I hope the boys are doing well. Love to you, Hetel. Okay, so let's look at some more examples of affirmations, Ezra. Yeah, what I really liked, Lisa, about some of the examples that parents had sent in there was when they're giving their child a feeling of connection, even though they're separated. And that's something that many children struggle with. So if you've got a little note in your lunchbox, that's an amazing way to still feel that strong connection to, to mum or dad or whoever it is um, when you're out of sight. And it's something that we call keeping in mind. And if children are struggling with it, doesn't even need to be as extreme as separation anxiety, but even if they're just having a little bit of a wobble after a holiday and they're finding it hard to separate, then that's a great way to do it. Um, and it, it gives them that sense of permanency that the adult is always there, even though they're not physically there. Um, yeah. And that gives them safety within the relationship. So they, there's some really brilliant ideas there I about used to. just giving children positive affirmations. And it, it doesn't even need to be verbal, it can be written, it can be a, a, a signal that you have, a special little code that you have together and just to say, you know, I see you and I know you're doing your best, you're doing a good job. I used to do this with my children and this is before there was even anything called mindfulness because my children are now 28, 26 and 23. In particular, my daughter talks about the notes I used to put in her lunchbox. I used to say things to her such as um, I used to say, you know, I'm thinking of you and I wish I could be at school playing with you like your friends. Aren't they lucky to have you to play with? Um, Suzanne said, I've had to leave, but she's going to watch the rest later. Thanks for talking about a great topic. Um, Lydia, Henry's mummy, said, could we also look at um, stopping clinginess? So I think that we can touch on that with um, on our next live. Um, but to come back to uh, Hetel, I'm just coming to you, Hetel. I haven't forgotten. Please discuss how we can use affirmations whilst teaching online. Okay, that's an interesting one. Uh, Rene Ta Teum has said, before bed, we go around to each family member and we list three things we are grateful for each day. Okay, so just to come back to Hetel's question of more affirmations. Um, there is a great company run by my friend, Lauren, called Mini Mindfuls and she sells a practical kit for you to have your affirmations and affirmation cards. She also sells lunchbox, lunchbox affirmation cards. So check out Lauren at Mini Mindfuls. Um, but affirmations can be, you know, I am growing in strength. And, you know, my body is strong. I can, I can do more than I think I can. I, I am happy and calm today. You know, just those sorts of things. Can you think of any, um, Ezra? 
What we like to do in school is uh, it's an a emotional check-in or a mindful check-in, and it's just like that, what you've described, it's really reflecting on how you're feeling inside, and it could be used in a, in a fun way as an analogy. So if you were uh, um, an item of food or if you were uh, a musical instrument or if you were a mode of transport, uh, what kinds of mood would you be in? So we can make yeah. it some silly things as well. And, and children really like that, just to try and compare their feelings to, to other objects. Um, and then it helps them to explain why. So are they feeling really slow and sluggish? Are they feeling energetic and a little bit hyper? So there's lots of nice ways that children can tune in to how they're feeling inside. Um, the parents that are on our Zoom workshop, if you've got any questions, let's. I think we've got one down here. So we've said, okay, uh, no, she did, that's a teacher saying she couldn't, she couldn't tune in. So can you um, tell us some examples of really great practice that you see in Arbor School happening around mindfulness as a psychologist, Ezra? So, as I said, we've got our mindfulness coordinator yeah. and all the students are encouraged to do mindfulness twice a day for about 10 minutes. And it's not just the meditation, it's the, the lesson behind why they're doing what they're doing. So, um, some of the great things that I've seen are self-appreciation, um, if you like, so recognising your own strengths. Um, as well as the strengths in others, but being able to speak positively about yourself and not only your attributes, but also reflecting on other things that I feel self-conscious about. And again, going back to mindfulness, becoming more accepting of yeah. ourselves as we are um, and, and being confident enough uh, within the class, uh, the, the things that we're, we're not so confident about. And that's really nice for building class communities and, and really strong relationships within the class and safety within the class. So that can be done as a circle time activity and, and children build up that trust with each other and with the teacher. Mm. I like to say um, with things with children, you know, you know, I'm growing every day and every day I'm learning more. Um, mm -hmm. and that there is time so the the behind that the the sense that okay so right now I might find school difficult and I might find sitting on the mat and listening to my teacher difficult but every day I'm learning and each day I'm able to sit just a little bit longer and helping children know that very soon it will get a bit easier because every day we do change every day we evolve and that it won't always be difficult for children yeah and and we also recognize you know, we're, we're always reflecting on what we're offering children as part of their well-being program and yes. mindfulness is one strand of that and then alongside that we have lots of other uh, approaches that complement mindfulness. Um, so we, we're very much, um, you know, we're not seeing it as a, that mindfulness fits everyone, um, but there are certainly aspects of it that I think everyone yeah. can benefit from. Yeah. And there's, there's other therapies that happen as well, and it can really enhance the work that mindfulness does. Yeah. And um, Saima Farah said that sometimes she uses an affirmation puppet for a highly anxious child. That's nice. I mean, using puppets and teddies for social stories is something we all love doing as, as teachers. But to use the puppet to help with affirmations, I think is lovely. And I think somebody asked a moment ago about how to bring in affirmations as a teacher when you're working online. Um, my first answer is, is set it up as a practice, begin that as a ritual and part of your online learning, that before we jump straight in, we take a few moments, um, you know, to do a mindfulness activity with the children and just have it as part of your, part of your practice. I think we've learned more and more that even though we're teaching online or I work with half of my families are online and half the families I work with on 
you know, sleep training, behaviour, anything is on Zoom. Um, and we're learning more and more that we can do a great deal, you know, on Zoom. I mean, look at this. We're able to connect with lots of people using this medium. So, you know, be hopeful if you are delivering a lot of online learning that there are things that you could do. Um, Ezra, I, I, you know, grateful for your time. I'm aware that you need to get back to your busy, busy life as head of psychology services at Arba. Thank you to Marcia uh, Megha and Sunita um, for joining us on the Zoom workshop at Arbor School Parents. And thank you to Arbor School for giving us their time today. Um, I've got a few more um, workshops coming up with Arbor School. We're going to be doing school readiness workshop if you want to get in touch. I've personally got some potty training awareness workshops and a session where you can, um, it's called Up Close and Personal, where you can ask all your parenting questions. We've also got Talk for Writing coming soon with um, Lisa Davidge, who heads up the Talk for Writing team at Arbor. So lots and lots of information and support for parents from uh, both Arbor School and I. Just to see if there's any more questions. Thank you to everybody who joined us also on Instagram. Appreciate. It's lovely to see you all. Um, thank you, Ezra. Thank you very much, Lisa. Thank you. See you again soon, Ezra. See you. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. So goodbye, everybody. It's been wonderful to see you um, this morning. So that was just a live. I'm here. Thank you, Mum. You found it a really interesting topic. I did too. Um, and when I'm working with families on a variety of challenges, I will always come back to some part of mindfulness and trying to adopt it into family's life. And I think it's no secret that Arbor School is one of my absolute favorites. I love the work that they do. It's so innovative and they're just leading from the front with their work. Um, thank you to everybody. And uh, it's my pleasure as always to see you all. So lots of love everybody.